So this is one of my favorite section. As a developer on AWS, it is so important for you to know about CICD. And I love CICD, it really allows me to be a better developer and I'll tell you what it is about in a second. But so, setting up is always painful and I'm so glad that there's managed tools on AWS to do it. So first of all, what is CICD? Well, we know how to create the resources in AWS manually. We've done this in the fundamentals, we've created everything. And we know how to interact now with AWS programmatically as well. We know how to use the CLI and that's a little bit better, right? And we've seen how we can use Elastic Beanstalk to basically bring all these things together so that we have less manual work to do. But still, when we deploy to Beanstalk, even if we could use a CLI, there was still a lot of manual steps. And all these manual steps, you know, from my personal experience and probably yours, when there's too many manual steps, there's a high likelihood of doing mistakes and errors. And so this is what we'd like to get to. We'd like to just push our code, you know, change the code straight from our computer push it somewhere, we'll call it a repository, and automatically we want things to happen magically, such as the code is on AWS. That's how much complexity we'd like to have at all. So we want things to happen automatically, the right way, making sure everything, your code, you know, is tested before it's deployed. We don't want to push bad code into production. And we want the possibility to try out different stages, dev, test, pre-prod, prod, or how many stages you may have, okay? And sometimes we may want to have manual approval where needed. For example, okay, there's a long testing happening and before releasing to prod, we want our bosses approval. So to be a proper AWS developer, we're going to need AWS CI/CD. So CI/CD is continuous integration and continuous sometimes deployment, sometimes delivery. Uh, but this section is all about automating everything we've done so far to increase safety. And the AWS certification has a whole part dedicated to CI/CD, so it's extremely important for you to understand and practice because it is really, really key to passing the certification. We're going to learn about code commit to store code, code pipeline to automate the pipeline deployment from code to all the way to Elastic Beanstalk. We'll use AWS code build to build and test our code, and we'll use AWS code deploy to deploy the code to EC2 fleets not Beanstalk, and so this is like a slight distinction I'll make during the course later on between code pipeline and code deploy. So continuous integration, what is it? Continuous integration is basically allowing developers to push code to a code repository as often as possible. And that code repository can be GitHub that you may be familiar with, code commit that we'll learn in this course, Bitbucket, etc. So here is me, I'm a happy developer, look at me, I'm smiling, and I push my code often to my code repository. Now it turns out that we're also going to have a test slash build server and it will check the code as soon as it pushed. So very often it will just look at it. And for this, we can use code build or the most popular one, at least on the open source world is called Jenkins, but there are other obviously tools out there. And so the build server just gets the code from the code repository and every time we do a push, it's going to build and test it. I don't see why you set that up, but that's the idea, right? And then for the whole loop to be complete, the developer, so us, will get feedback about the tests and checks that have passed or failed. And so the build server comes back to us, maybe with an email, maybe with the user interface, UI you can look at, but the developer can get the results of the build. And so the developer can spend more time creating code and pushing often, and then the build server takes to the work to just check what is happening. So the goal of this is to find bugs early and fix them early as well, is to deliver faster as the code is tested continuously, it's to deploy often in the end, so we'll see this in the next slide, and it's to make developers happier as they're always unblocked in their workflow. They don't have to spend time waiting 15 minutes for their code to be tested. There is a build server doing that just for them. So continuous integration overall is going to increase your productivity by a lot. And then finally, we have continuous delivery. So we want to ensure that the software can be released reliably whenever needed. And we want to make sure that deployments happen often and they're quick, right? We don't want to wait three days, we don't want to ship one release every three months, or we just want to move that from that concept, you know, from hard releases every three months, all manual to let's release five times a day or even more, you know, some companies release every hour. That usually means that you have to automate everything. You can't have someone doing a release every hour, obviously. And so that whole automation around deployment is what we're looking into. And so for this, we can use code deploy or Jenkins CD or Spinnaker or other tools. I mean, there's a bunch of tools available out there. In this course, obviously, we're going to learn about AWS code deploy.
So what does it look like? Well, it looks like we are doing the same thing. So we push the code often and then the build server will get the code and build and test. That is from continuous integration. And then we'll have a deployment or delivery server and it will basically deploy every build that passes. Okay, and that's a simplification, but you get the idea. And so we had our application, it was running version one or you know, the previous version, I'll just call it version one. And so the deployment server will go and run a bunch of scripts that we have to program obviously, but it will make sure that the applications go from version one to version two. And that will happen, you know, from version two to version three, etc. for every time we push the code to the repository. And so this whole pipeline right here that's happening is really what continuous delivery is about. It is about deploying as often as possible, predictably and reliably, because the day you actually want to go to production, you want it to work very quickly and deterministically. So technology stack for CI CD, it's something that AWS shows. And so I've, I've got inspired by them on this graph, but basically there's five steps. Uh, for this, this code, build, test, deploy, and provision. And so for code, we can use AWS code commit, and we'll learn it in this course, and GitHub or a third party code repository. For this course, we will not be using GitHub, but if that's your tool of choice, then go ahead, use it. Then to build and test, we have the option on AWS to use AWS code build. Very easy. And so this can do both builds and tests. And usually these steps are quite uh, similar and bundled together or we can use something like Jenkins CI or a third party CI server. Obviously there is always the choice to move away from AWS. Then when you want to deploy, we've already seen AWS Elastic Beanstalk and it's been working great. So Elastic Beanstalk, as we've seen, has provisioned the EC2 machines, the autoscaling groups, the load balancers for us. And on top of it, every time we upload a new zip directly to Elastic Beanstalk, it provisions, you know, it deploys the application straight onto our servers and maybe sometimes provisions uh, new servers in case we choose immutable deployments. So this is good, Elastic Beanstalk handle both, but sometimes you are managing your own fleet of EC2 instances, maybe using something called CloudFormation that we'll see later in this course. And so the idea is that to deploy to a user managed EC2 instance fleet, you want to use something called AWS code deploy, which is more low level and a bit more difficult to use, but it's still good to know about. And so that's the whole, you know, code build test deploy provision. And because we need to orchestrate all these things, you know, we have to use something for orchestration called AWS code pipeline. Surely there will be other uh, orchestration tools out there, but the one AWS wants you to use on their cloud is called AWS code pipeline. And so in this, this section, as you can see, everything that's in orange, we have to learn. So there is a lot to learn ahead, but you get the complete picture of how all these things fit together. And that's really important when you get questions in the exam to know which uh, tool is appropriate for which task. So I hope that was helpful as an introduction to CICD and I will see you in the next lecture.